Welcome everyone. This is the second session in our LRD faculty webinar series. Today, our session is called Databases for Everyone, and this will be our quick walkthrough of databases we believe are useful uh, for any faculty or student member on campus for both their research and their fundraising needs. So to get started, I wanted to mention that the UDC library uh, databases are available to you through our library website at udc.libguides.com. You can get to this through the main UDC website, through my UDC, through Blackboard, or if you just Google UDC library, we are the first thing that pops up. All of these databases are located here in our A to Z resource list, and to access them for free, you will need to access them through the library's website, and you will be prompted to log in using your UDC email and password. If you are asked, you are an external user. I know that doesn't make a lot of sense, but it just means we get our login information from Banner and do not create it within the library itself. So to get started, I'm gonna to go to our A to Z resource list link. And here, this will take you to all of the databases you have access to. Now, we don't have the ability to cover all of these today, which is why we are offering the additional webinars focusing on specific databases. But as you can see, we have 239 databases that are available to you. Today, we will be taking a look at Credo Reference, Opposing Viewpoints and Context, Access World News, Prep Step, and the Foundation Center. And the reason we are focusing on these today are they are multi-subject databases with some fun resources that both you and your students can benefit from. So to get started, I'm going to go to C and go down to our Credo Reference database. Credo Reference is a reference library. It's basically academic Wikipedia. So it's a great place to start uh, if you're used to going to Wikipedia or your students are used to going to Wikipedia because it sort of acts the same way. It just happens to be academic. So what's nice about Credo is all the information that is available to, your, to you and your students. It includes encyclopedias, dictionaries, indices, thesauri, maps, atlases, all of those sorts of fun things. And what's nice here on the front page, you do have your typical search bar, but you also have popular topics. And this change is based on what people are searching. If you go down even further, you will see they have their own research tips library. So this is a great place to direct your students, say if they're having trouble paraphrasing or if they're having trouble synthesizing your research. You can see if you click view all, all of the resource videos that are available to you and your students. So this is a great thing to assign to your students as an extra credit or just as a little bonus to help them learn how to do research. For the popular topics, as I said, these change. I'm going to click today on let's go to minimum wage since that is in the news. And what these do is these are basically pre-populated searches. So you could search for this on your own or you can just click on the topic. And for every single search you do in Credo, you will be given a quick summary and then you will see the resource list here. And what's nice about these uh, results is that there are filters at the top to help you narrow it down. So you can limit by type of um, information, subject matter, and this will change based on what you're looking at, the kind of media. So if you tell your students they need a map or they need an image or they need audio, this is a great way to limit to that. By date range and by length. Some students are like, I only want the short stuff. So here you go, that's how they can limit it. Another fun function of Credo that I personally love to help students explore topics is this web map here. It's sort of like a brainstorming function. You can expand the mind map. And what's nice about this is it connects topics that are in this database. So for minimum wage, we can think about, hmm, let's go to the Fair Labor Standards Act. And then it branches out and gives you more on that. Hmm, let's go to sweatshop. So as you can see, you can just click, keep clicking. This is like falling down the Wikipedia link hole, except you're in our Credo database. And anytime you click on one of these things, you get more and more information. So this is a great way to help students find, you know, related topics if they're having trouble identifying something. And then if you pop it back in, you go back to where you were. So this is a fun way. And as you can see, the list updates with the topic you are on. So this is a good way for students to build their references. If we were to go into one of these topics, as you will see, this is from the Encyclopedia of Race and Racism. The students have the ability to save, to cite, to share, to read aloud, to save these things. They can read it right here on the screen. 
And what's fun is at the bottom, if there is a bibliography or a list of resources, we have attempted to link to those full text resources. In some instances, it does directly link you to that full text resource in another database. And again, the ability for students to cut and paste and cite this information. So Credo Reference is a great place to do background research. For our next database, I'm gonna scroll back up here and I'm gonna go over to the side here, Opposing Viewpoints in Context. It's also available under O in the A to Z resource list. Opposing Viewpoints in Context is a great resource for trop topical research. These are things that students, when they're focusing on current events or pro-con lists, this is a great place to start. Opposing Viewpoints in Context is sort of like Credo, except it has far more information. It's not just limited to those reference aspect type resources. On the front page here, you will see a rotating list of popular topics along with issues. And the reason I like to take students into this database is yes, you can search it like a regular database, but if you go here under the browse issues list, Opposing Viewpoints and Context has created pre-populated lists of content. They do get updated and new resources are added when new topics become popular. So say you were teaching your students about global warming and climate change. They can click on this pre-populated thing and they will see an overview of the topic. And then if they scroll down, you can see different types of resources. So if students only need academic journals or if they're looking for audio, you know, there's a lot of NPR stories in here. If they're looking for viewpoints, these are those pro-con opinion pieces newspaper articles, magazines, videos, all of that is available here. And what's nice about this is you can then search within these results. So say they wanna focus on sea level rise and climate change. If they put that search term in here, they will specifically see only sea level rise as it is listed in this global warming and climate change topic. On top of that, we have additional filters over here. So they can search by document type. They can search by subject matter. They can search by Lexile level, which is good for those uh, education students who need to find resources that fit uh, those younger grades. Um, you can also limit to peer reviewed or search within this. I'm gonna go back to the homepage here in Opposing Viewpoints and Context and show you another great resource for both you and for students. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you can search here, as I said, under the advanced search. They have your typical advanced search where you can add Boolean operators, all these additional filters. But they also have publication search, which gives you the ability to search within specific publications. So if you only want newspapers or if you're only looking for uh, information from a specific country, this is a great place to look. I also like to point students to the topic finder. The topic finder is great because you can put in any topic and like that mind map in Credo, it builds in things for you. So say, we'll do the minimum wage again. When you type in minimum wage, it pops up with this very visual breakdown of the topic. And yes, this can be a little funky. There's a lot of CNN on this, but you can focus on workers. And if you click on workers, that furthers break down into restaurant workers. And the results over here change as you click on these topics. So raising the minimum wage, again, the results change as you break down these topics. This is a great way for students to narrow down their research or to just do some background research to get an idea of what is available to them. Our next resource that I'm going to look at is Access World News. Access World News is a new resource for the university libraries. And so this is one reason we wanna point it out to you. As the name states, it's focused on news. It includes things like college newspapers, uh, national newspapers, local newspapers, newsworthy blogs. And it works just like any other database in the sense that you can search here. They also have suggested topics on related areas. What's nice over here is they have created special reports. And these are like Credo, those topical issues that are you know, in the news. And when you click on the information, say celebrating Black History Month, since we are in the month of February, 
it will bring up information related to that topic and it breaks it down further into other issues. And then it also helps provide you with background data, images, websites, things like that. In addition to that, they have a hot topics section. And this, like the Credo database, are the popular hot topics that you can then go back and look at previous month's hot topics. So this is a good way for students to get an idea of how the news has changed and developed or how an issue has changed over time. Going back to the search here. One of the things I wanna point out is you see we have your basic search bar. We also have more search options. When you go into more search options, you will see various ways you can search for things. You can limit in these fields by headline, by caption, if you're looking for images, by the type of source, by word count, or what I love to point out is our search by location. In fact, just yesterday, I was helping a student in a class who wanted to focus on water pollution in her native country of Colombia, and she was having trouble finding resources. And I said, why don't you go to Access World News and then limit your search to information coming out of South America. You are more likely to find information from Colombia using this resource than you would anywhere else. And you can even go further down and go into a specific country. And you will see, if you click on it, the exact sources coming out of those countries. So here, going into Colombia, you will see these are all of the newspapers from Colombia that are included in this. And they are in Spanish. And luckily, she spoke Spanish, so that was fine. But you will see these resources state by state, country by country. If we were wanting to look at what was going on in Texas with the weather and the power outages, we could go into Texas and find local Texas newspapers. Say if we were concerned about Houston, for instance, you could limit that. So this is why NewsBank is a wonderful resource because it gives you the ability to drill down by country. Next, I'm going to show you two databases that are a little bit different from our typical resource research databases. Under P, I am going to scroll down to Prep Step. And what Prep Step is, is it's not so much a research database, but an online learning platform. And this is very useful to your students and you, uh, depending on what you have going on in your research. Um, we highly recommend you create an account within PrepStep itself because as a learning platform, you have the ability to save learning pathways, to save your spot in tutorials and things like that. So I have signed in here. It is free. So you and your students do not need to worry about that. And most of our resources are here under the college library. And these are what are known as their learning centers. So say you are helping your students or you're teaching in education, you can tell them, hey, go to the core English skills and you can go to the learning center on grammar. And within that, you'll see grammar practice sheets, tutorials, quizzes. These are self-paced tutorials, self-paced videos, self-paced worksheets. Uh, essentially, this is all just self-paced additional help. Most of our students uh, could benefit from looking at the college success skills. I know we all could benefit from this sometimes. So say you want help with classroom success strategies. This will walk you through things like um, note taking, um, like memorization. And when you go into one of these tutorials, and here I'll just go to reading strategies for class. These are a self-paced tutorial that I can then save into my personal account to finish later or go step-by-step step through the process. And many of these have post tests at the end to help students assess their own learning. One of the centers I do wanna point out for a lot of our um, um, majors are our career preparation centers. This is great because not only does it help students you know, learn about specific careers or um, focus on general career building skills, they also offer help with placement tests. And this is very important for some of our students, say, who are trying to take those health exams or the cosmetology exams and things like that. So they can go in and look at these specific tests. I know we have a nursing program. So here, students can prepare for these various tests and exams. So this is a great resource that a lot of professors don't look at because it's not a typical research database, but it is extremely valuable to you and your team. Finally, the last resource I wanna point out is something that in the past would only have been available on campus, but because of the COVID 
um, outbreak pushing us all to work from home, it is now offered to our uh, community um, online. You, to access the foundation directory online, you will need to email us for us to provide you with the link. That's what the contract has mandated for us. We can't just put this on the web. We need to be asked to provide this link for you. And the reason this resource is fantastic is because it helps you find grants. And while our on-campus access does provide more information, this essentials package provides you with a lot of information to help you get started finding grants and grant funders. So in this case, I'm just gonna do a basic search. Say you were doing something on nutrition education. You can go in and here it will provide you information on grant makers, on specific grants if we were on campus. And then same thing if we were on campus on recipients. So you can see who has received grants in the past. And when you go into these things, if you click on the grant maker, you will receive information about what they are funding, where the money is going, what kind of things they are uh, providing grants, how big they are, and then information about that grant, fund, grant funder in particular. So obviously Bank of America is huge, but they give you related grants and things like that. So this is wonderful if you are trying to find money to fund your research. There are a lot of research grants in here. And while this will not help you write the grant, it will tell you who to go to, provide you their contact info and all of that information. When you are here, you can email it to yourself. You can download it as a PDF. You can create an account, tag things, and save it for yourself for later. So this is a great tool for you to help you get started in your grant funding research. So now these are the databases we had planned on covering today, but I am happy to answer any questions you may have about doing research in these library databases in particular, or if you are interested in learning a little bit more about any of the other databases, I am happy to answer your questions. Please feel free to pop them into the chat or um, to unmute yourself and answer it back. Uh, one of the questions I am seeing in the chat is, can students have access to the foundation site? Yes. In fact, this is something I know there have been classes in the past that have said your assignment is to write a grant. And yes, we can provide access to that. They just need to ask us for access. If you have students who are interested in learning a bit more about the foundation directory online, it is a part of our um, access candid. And here um, over on our quick links, we do have a guide um, about information on Candid. You can provide this information to your students so they know a little bit more about what is in these databases. And I will go ahead and pop this into the chat. And what's great about Candid, um, they also offer free resources. So they will offer free courses on how to write a grant, the basics of grant writing, the basics of finding a grant and things like that. Those are available through the Candid website. As I wait to see if any other questions are gonna come in, in the chat, I have added an assessment form for this event. Since this is a new series of things we are offering, we would love to hear your feedback about what you thought of today and what webinars you'd like to see into the future. I'll give one or two more minutes for questions.
All right, I'm not seeing anything come in. I would like to thank you all for attending today. If you would like to attend any of the other webinars in this series, particularly if you are interested in Prep Step, Prep Step is going to have its own session. You can go to our library website and here under the library faculty webinar series, you will see the rest of the events we are holding, the dates, the information about that particular resource, and then have a link to our registration form. It is okay for you to register multiple times. We are happy to see that. Thank you for attending today. I'm going to stop recording now and stop the screen share. So if you